What's going on? So I have this old footage of me removing the rear dash in my WRX, which I wasn't going to release because I had the camera set to the wrong resolution. But since I've had several requests for it, I decided to put the video together after all. The rear dash is notorious for rattles, vibrations, and road noise, especially if you have a sub in the trunk. So I'll show you how to remove it and also go over the things I did and materials I used to soundproof that area back there. Everything I used along with more information will be in the video description. Let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we have to do in order to remove the rear dash is to take off these side pieces. You can see right there that it says SRS airbag. So obviously back here behind this cover, there's an airbag and you'll be able to see it in a second. So just be very careful and don't be unnecessarily rough with it. All you have to do is pull it out that way and it'll snap off. It's just held in place by retaining clips. So you can just stick your fingernails or panel tools in this gap and snap it out. Some of the clips might remain in place once you remove the panel, so just take them off afterwards and put them back on the trim piece. And again, be careful not to mess with the airbag. Repeat this step on the other side. For this next step, we'll go to the trunk. The rear dash is held in place by seven retaining clips, and you can access three of them from back here. There's one right there, there's another one right there in the middle, and there's one right here. If you grab yourself some pliers and just push those through, it'll become easier to pop out the cover from the top. So just pinch them and push them through. All right, let me show you where the rest of the retaining clips are. Regarding the three we just pushed through the trunk, there's one right about there, the other one's right back here, and one's on the other side back here. So for the rest, there is one right about here somewhere, and the same on the other side, and then right underneath here, there's one which is also mirrored on the other side. Knowing where all of the clips are, pick your favorite side, and as you see me doing, simply pull up. Stick your hand under the rear dash, and in a control way, pull it up until it snaps. Then bring your hand to the front and unsnap it like you see me doing. The clip that's right here was one of the ones that we unclipped from the trunk, so it should easily come up. Now you can slide your hand under the dash all the way to the rear to snap off the ones back there. Once you hear them snap, the dash will be loose. At this point, leave it in place and repeat this on the other side to get the remaining clips. Once it's fully unsnapped, resist the temptation to yank it out because the reverse light is still connected. So grab it by the top and pull it up. Then go ahead and turn it and unplug the light. We've now reached the point to remove the dash. All of the soundproofing work that you can do can easily be done from within the car as you'll see me doing without having to remove the dash completely. If you need to remove it completely, you'll have to also remove the seatbelt, which I highly advise against, but it's very easy if you really want to. For my purposes, I simply folded down the back seats and moved the front seats all the way up and there was plenty of room. I wanted to show you everything that I think could, could possibly be a uh, issue in the future and things that I'm gonna rectify now. First thing, the retaining clips. That's a rattle point right there, it's loose. From the factory, they put little foam pieces right there on every part of this plastic that touches the metal. And they do that obviously so it doesn't rattle. But some of them, like this one right there, are not on perfectly. So you can see it's not on perfectly. And over time, they wore out too. So this is basically wore down almost to the plastic. So I'm gonna rectify that too. This right here is your keyless entry box right there. This cable right here, check out this cable right here. That's a big rattle point right there. And that same goes for all the cables. That cable over there, same deal. If you want to get some foam to wrap cables in or to help you out in a pinch, check this out. This costs $2.50 at Lowe's. This is exactly what you need right here. This is tape and it's foam. Perfect. And then I got some of this sound damping uh, material. So I'm gonna use this on some of the bigger areas. Like areas like this right here. There's very thin metal right there. So like I'm gonna put some of that on there. And just th throughout back here, wherever I see that there's like uh, big spaces that should uh, have some of it. And this right here will absorb some of the vibrations from the sub and from the road and just make it sound better back here. Finally, I have some leftover roadkill from when I put some under the carpet. So I'm gonna take the pieces that I have left over right here and all the roadkill is, it's got a thin layer of vinyl 
right there you can see it although it's not very heavy so this is not the heavy duty stuff and then there's a layer of foam this is going to be the soundproofing stuff so this is going to absorb some of those frequencies from coming through there frequencies that we don't want like road noise so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover this entire back with it and i'll show you that and i think after i'm done doing that it should uh should be a pretty big difference first thing i'm doing is i'm taking all these retaining clips that fit in there all loosely like this and i am just very low tech solution little piece of high quality tape electrical tape i mean just put it on there like that and then just put it in over the tape Now it's good. Okay, so I'm doing that to all of them. Okay, so the next thing I did is I grabbed some of that foam tape and I went over all the spots where this plastic touches the metal. So I just put some on there and, and I added some to some spots that didn't have any. So like right there. And then I went over the spots where it was already some on there. So I just put some more. So that's all I did. And I did that for the entire piece. Okay, so the next thing I did is I took some of that sound damping material and I put some in a couple of spots. So like right there, um, it doesn't have to be much. I only did the bigger areas. That's just to, you know, add a little bit of mass to this. It wasn't much at all. Like that square right there, I left empty, even though it's a big spot that doesn't have anything. But the reason why I left that empty is because that's where the keyless entry box goes. So that's what I did. I just put some sound damping material down in a couple little spots and that should uh, help the panel resonate better. All right, so this is what I did. All the cables back here, there's actually only two. All I did was I took some of that foam tape and I just put it underneath where the cable goes. That way it doesn't have a place to rattle against the metal. That's all I did. Very low tech, very easy. When you put the cover on, it'll just sit here and push the cable down just like it is right there and it's got no chance to vibrate against the metal so that's what i did i did this here and on the other side too anywhere where there's a cable okay so i had a few scraps of roadkill left from uh when i did the carpet so i uh stitched it all together and cut it all up to fit back here underneath the rear dash so that's why it looks like crap but it's all right it's gonna be hidden nobody's gonna see it in theory this should block some of the road noise from coming in from the trunk area to the cabin so i decided instead of uh just wasting these put them to good use i shouldn't have a problem with fitment so i just all i did was cut open the openings for all of the retaining clips all of the brackets the seat belt i left a big opening over there for where the keyless entry uh, module goes and uh that should be good to go so We'll see how that works out. Again, all the stuff you see me using, I'll link to in the video description. With a subwoofer being in the trunk, the rear dash gets a lot of vibration and as a result, of course, rattles. It's also a good entry point for road noise. Now, everything I did here worked phenomenally, but they're just ideas. You might go a different way about it depending on what you have on hand. If I was to do it over now, I would likely use sound skins, which is the same product that I used on my doors. It's a bit more expensive, but it provides sound deadening and soundproofing at the same time and dramatically improves the overall feel of the interior. I hope despite the video quality that you got something out of it and maybe even feel motivated to tackle this yourself. I can tell you that the rattles will not go away on their own. So I hope at least I inspired you to get rid of them once and for all. Don't forget to drop the video a like and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks a lot for watching and take care.